had, um, instead of a specific uh, visceral and parietal peritoneum, we really just had a single structure that represented both of those layers. With the changes that you made, you sort of made sure that anatomically it was done correctly. Yeah. You know, the, the, the other work you did too was that on the mesentery, right? Did you, did you change that? Um, did you add some ligaments here? I added the like... the curvature of the stomach? In the lesser sac, a lot of um, the ligaments that make up that sac have been now added. Um, and then, in the, yeah, in the lesser mentum, we, we originally had is now split into these two ligaments, the hepatoduodenal and the hepatogastric ligament. You know, the, the, another big change that we made was regarding the sort of greater omentum, um, sort of this apron that covers up the small intestine. Um, so an important thing that I was considering when I was working on this was that this is a folded structure that turns back on itself and um, feeds into the transverse mesocolon and it's all one piece. So originally it was just sort of floating out there, right? Yeah. It, so we, it didn't attach to any of the anatomical structures within the abdomen. Yeah, so one of the things that was really important that we were trying to show is that the peritoneum is all a single structure with many folds that fold on top of each other. Right. And so now um, with our updated model, you can see a lot of those folds represented. Right, so this actual, this, this mesentery actually comes down and folds back on itself. Yeah, so it comes down, folds on itself, and then attaches to the transverse mesocolon right here. It's very hard to tell, but... Right. And can you select that by itself, the transverse mesocolon? You can. Yes, so that's also another piece that... That was something else we didn't have. So we increased the level of detail a lot, specifically around the peritoneum. Uh, a local medical school that we work with requested uh, that we make revisions to the peritoneum because uh, they teach what's called the FAST exam and FAST exam stands for Focused Assessment with Sonography for Trauma and what happens is that if somebody comes in um, whether it's a stab wound to the abdomen what they can quickly do is assess uh, that particular patient and see if there's any excess fluid uh, within the peritoneal cavity. So what you were able to do is basically create and divide up the peritoneum. So the reason we wanted to show these spaces is because there's four important spaces for the FAST exam, which is the sprite subphrenic space, which can be viewed through the liver um, on ultrasound, and then also this Morrison's pouch here between the kidney and the liver. Um, and it was important also to show these gutters on the side because this is how fluid travels in the body. Um, so if there is a buildup in this area, it will drain down into the pelvic region. So this view is different from the main anatomy in that um, you'll very easily be able to switch between the male and female peritoneum. And also to help understand where these spaces are in the body, you can turn the organs on and off. Um, so you'll be able to see that like this space here. Spino right, so the nice thing about being able to turn the organs off is that you could actually see the negative spaces of where those organs fit mm -hmm. um, inside the peritoneal cavity, which is really kind of cool. All the spaces are mostly the same in the um, abdominal region, but once you get to the pelvic region, um, there are a lot of different names for each of these spaces. Working with the medical school and understanding like the clinical side of things um, was really interesting because anatomical side, um, yeah. where a lot of these spaces are included that would be good for um, med students but aren't necessarily used too much clinically. Um, but the I got a lot of direction on the FAST exam uh, regions from the medical school. Right, and so the other thing that's interesting is that when you're looking at it anteriorly, right, there's sort of this division between left and right side, um, sort of inferiorly as well as you have a left and right 
subphrenic space. So these all have a lot of names that they go by, which is why we have this um, section on the side where you can kind of read different names that your medical book might be using right, or right. a physician might be using. Um, yeah, I found that probably the most difficult to understand because they use uh, more than one name. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think a, a lot of the naming in the peritoneum can be pretty confusing, especially with the like greater and lesser sac and then greater and lesser amentum too. Right, right, yep. Um, so this kind of like helps lay everything out in a really easy to understand it's way. In an orderly fashion, yeah. It's really good.